All right, Jamie, let's jump into it. So start off with Voex. So Voex is really interesting. Voex is this pink line right here, and the yellow is just the running average of Voex. Blue is the price line, as you can see on the bottom here. So Voex basically is a very useful metric to measure um, what kind of state uh, the price movements are in. So for example, uh, when Voex is above this upper black line, uh, everything up here from upper black line to the top is called the inhibition zone. When uh, Voex spikes into the inhibition zone, it shows instability in price. And usually instability in price results in downside. So for example here, uh, we had the spike into uh, inhib the inhibition zone. And when it came back in, you can see price uh, you know, took a tumble. And then price rose. Uh, while Voex was coming up, you know, from the bottom black line to the top black line, that's fine. And you can see price rose right after it. Uh, but once it spiked into the inhibition zone, it showed, you know, st instability in price. And once it came back down, you can see price took a nice tumble. Same thing over here. Voex spiked up. Now it's only it's only uh, really bearish, quote unquote, once it spikes back down. So it comes in here, everything okay, price moving. But this shows that there's massive instability in this price move and it won't last. So right when it comes back down into the uh, stability zone, which is the middle, you see price takes a little fall, bounces around the stability zone, rises up here, you know, price gets all, VOX gets all spiky. Once it comes back down into the stability zone, you can see price take a nice fall. Drift sideways for a while. Coming up to here, uh, we have VOX, you know, instability right? It's in the middle of the stability zone. Everything looks okay. And uh, Vox is telling us that we can expect price to move up. You can see when Vox rises, price tends to follow. Vox rising, price following. Vox rising, price following. Vox rising, right? So same, so too here, we should expect price to move up. Uh, the bottom is called propagation. When Vox moves into propagation, that's usually pretty bearish. Um, okay, snap graphs. So one day is predicting bullish. The rest aren't, but not so important. Um, okay, let's go to the gamma hedging heat map. So the influence distribution um, shows like what's most probable over the next five days, wherever the peak is, that's most probable, and then the tail ends show what could happen. Uh, so very, very small chance of extreme uh, move higher, but it does say that we can make a solid move higher. That's what it's expecting. And we can see if price starts to move up, uh, you know, into this 1911 to $20 range, uh, it should, you know, continue climbing as the blue represents purchasing support and dealers will have to hedge their positions by purchasing shares as price moves into here. If we can get above 2036, you know, the purchasing support gets stronger and obviously above 2122, we could have a serious gamma squeeze to the upside. On the flip side, if we sell down to low uh, mid-low 18s, we can start falling into negative uh, selling pressure, and this means that dealers will have to sell shares and price can continue falling. Um, we have the expected price range. That's next. So for tomorrow, uh, May 4th, um, we have 1949 as the upper bound interval. So if price moves above that, uh, we may we are at the risk of a mean reversion and lower bound interval of 1831. Now what really sticks out is this. This is what really sticks out, a 2000 a 9% increase in dealer long puts. Uh, that's what it says long, but what that means is that uh, somebody, some entity, or large number of entities with money uh, sold puts, and that's what this is representing. So that when we retail or institutions sell puts, the dealer is long. When we buy puts, the dealer is short. And there was a 94% decrease in bought puts. So that means that people that had puts sold them off. That's the decrease in puts. Now, if I buy a put, then the dealer sold the put, so he short the put. Same thing with calls, right? Forget out the money and in the money, that's not so important. But long is if I sell a call, the dealer who bought the call is now long. So 53% increase in sold in covered calls um, and a 32% increase in sold off calls. So if I buy a call, who sold it to me, the dealer, which makes him short. This is in the perspective of the dealer. And today, there was a decrease of 32% in bought calls. So that's what we have uh, from here. So somebody is betting that, you know, this is the bottom right here, and they just sold a ton of puts. Usually when that happens in GME, 
uh, we get some nice price improvement. Um, all right, that's all for there. Uh, when we take a look at our chart here, uh, we could see that price is you know, thrashing around at the hourly trigger, just like it thrashed around the hourly trigger here. We don't have any uh, clean break yet. We did move up to the 1922 level, we rejected. And now you can see you know, we're in a pretty tight uh, three trigger cluster. Pretty tight uh, three trigger clusters that last a while. When they do um, come out of it, you know, price is either pretty much gonna come straight up here or we're gonna come hard back down. So now I wanna talk about the difference between what happened over here and why we can expect a different uh, situation here. So let's look at our momentum, velocity, and we come back down and here's where you can see it. When we made uh, this struggle at the hourly trigger and came back down, look at the look at the velocity, right? So the daily velocity is coming down right here, comes down further, comes down further, comes down further, comes down further. The whole time price is selling down, daily velocity is getting worse and worse and worse. When you ever bounce, when price bounces while velocity has been getting worse the entire time, always you're gonna get a new low, okay? If price bounces, but velocity has not made any divergences and just comes up, this is automatically a false move and you wanna sell the false move usually at the hourly trigger. Um, or if it's five minute divergence, you wanna sell at, or if there was no five minute divergences, you know, and price moves up, then you wanna sell it at the five minute trigger. But point is, is that um, daily velocity had been coming down, and so this is considered a false move. But when price made this new low, what happened? Very simple, we had a bullish daily divergence. So here is your low, look at the daily velocity, and then price made a new low, and we had daily divergence at an important level, 1812, that's Gavin's level. So that being said, now that we have a bullish daily divergence, it's possible for price to run to the daily trigger. When there's no daily bullish divergence, price is not gonna run to the daily trigger. When there's one, there's about a 33% chance that it will go. If there was, if price uh, comes down, makes a second bullish divergence, then there's a 66% chance price is gonna come up. And if it makes a third bullish divergence, and the whole time you know velocity is getting better, then uh, you have a 100% chance of price returning to this daily trigger. Um, so for here, we have one bullish divergence and very possible, reasonable uh, cause that price could uh, march up to this trigger. Now, we do know that we had a bullish four hour close above, um, above 1872, which, you know, Gavin talks about 1872 kind of being the line in the sand, a very important level. And you guys can see uh, we were able to hold this the entire day. Another thing is, is that if you look at SPY, uh, had a pretty disastrous day and GME managed to close green. So obviously GME is showing relative strength to the, to the market. Um, many things are telling us that GME should uh, continue higher. Now, um, you know, the trigger orientation trend is pretty awful. So just keep that in mind that we don't expect anything crazy, just maybe a move up here for now. Uh, then we can talk about price targets. Um, we could also obviously reject this level above, but we should be able to easily get above 1922. Uh, now let's take this away and let's talk about LDPM. So LDPM on the daily is a very important metric and many times can signify rallies or the end of rallies. So if we pull up LDPM, um, you guys can see that, you know, over here, price falls below the daily LDPM, really sells, comes above, gets a nice pop. A um, little bit choppy here, no doubt, but when it sells here, comes down pretty hard, comes above, below, price pops, LDPM comes above price, that's bearish, gets sold all the way down, LDPM comes below price, we get a really nice 50% move higher, choppy over here, granted, but then LDPM fell, moved above price at 22, showing bad liquidity for bulls in that area, and price you know, pretty much came all the way down to 18. So $4 drop in a pretty short time, you know, only two weeks. Uh, but today we had a very important LDPM crossover where the LDPM, which is the purple line, moves below price. You can see LDPM is at 1867 and price at 1890. When that happens, looking at history, you can usually expect a nice green day or a couple of green days or even a bullish trend to begin. So um, that's my bullish GME case for tomorrow. Interesting to see how this is going to play out. Um, and we'll see how it does tomorrow.